uh, for our project, for electronics project, Gage, Nathan, and I decided to uh, construct an automatic tracking solar panel, or ATSP for short. Uh, we, we chose this project because we wanted to gain a better understanding of the rotary actuated motors and the necessary operations needed to program with them. Uh, using skills implemented uh, in the lab with servos and state machines, we figured uh, we had all the resources necessary to carry out a well-constructed deliverable. The, the ATSP has quite a simple design. It incorporates a set of four photoresistors, which, which will be orientated uniformly on an array. You can see on top right here. And this array will have a divider, uh, which will separate each photoresistors into its own quadrant. Uh, the divider will, will extend outward from the base and then act like a shield towards any of the photoresistors in the quadrant. Um, and these shields like enables the shadow to be cast on any of the photoresistor when, when the whole thing is out of alignment. So, so when our photoresistor is misaligned, there will be a drop in a voltage across a circuit configuration to our Arduino right here. And using the drop, voltage will actuate a set of servos and then to, to realign the photo cell array in, in such a way where they all receive a proportional amount of light. Uh, so this is a basic picture of our uh, final project we have all we, we don't have our full fully mounts con like constructed yet was we were gonna do 3d printing but we didn't have the time to but during the fall we'll fully complete it according to our our final CAD draw here's an example of the ATSP functioning right now it's in state zero so it does nothing when it sees light so when I flip the switch, it's in state one towards the do nothing state. But if I shine a light, it'll switch to state two and rotate first. And then once it equalizes the rotation, sometimes it's just not sure because of the bolts at the bottom. Now it's in state three and now it's back to state two. And I, for example, if we need to adjust it this way, it's gonna go back to state two. And then once it rotates all the way around and doesn't see a bias, it'll rotate back up. And then it'll be back at state two. This is a picture of our functionality diagram. Uh, it's from uh, step one to three. It's just basically demonstrating the, the rotation on the Z axis with our, our bottom servo right here. And it was slowly realigned towards the sun. and when that plane is equalized, we will go to the, case, the second case right here, which is rotating on the X axis. Here's our finalized circuit diagram. Starting at the 12 volt power supply with the toggle switch, you can see it branches off and goes to three buck converters, which are routed back to a common ground. Two of the buck converters will be going to their respective servos, stepping the voltage down to 6.8 volts. Servos will be attached to a digital pin, which will receive an output signal from the Arduino Mega based on the variance in the voltage drop across the photoresistors. The buck converter going to the Arduino will step the voltage down to 9 volts. So in the event of some voltage fluctuation, the Arduino will have the greater than the necessary 5 volts needed for the Arduino to stay powered. And the 5 volt terminal on the Arduino will have four photoresistors in parallel, each with a 330 ohm current limiting resistor going to their respective analog input and a 1 kilo ohm pull down resistor going to ground. These photoresistors will be the array. In parallel with this array, we'll have a switch with a 10 kilo ohm pull down resistor going to ground. State machine is fairly straightforward with only four cases defining its position. It begins by initializing state zero, which will zero the X and Z axis. The zero position will have all the photoresistors pointing straight upward. This way, in case none of the photo cells are facing the sun, we won't have to implement some kind of a hunt function within the code just to be able to find a light source. When the switch is pressed, the timer will begin and it'll go to state one where it does nothing. From state one, one of three if statements may occur. First one, if time is greater than or equal to one second and there's any discrepancy within the left-right 
error that's greater than 0 0.12 volts, the z-axis needs readjustment, so it'll go to state two. Second one, if time is greater than or equal to one second and there's any discrepancy within the top bottom error that's greater than 0 0.12 volts, the x-axis needs to be readjusted, so it'll go to state three. And lastly, if the switch is pressed, it'll go to state zero to zero the axes. State two and three will also contain the third if uh, statement to prompt the execution of state zero. So uh, I'll try not to repeat that if I can help it. Uh, so in the event it goes to state two, another set of three if statements may occur. Number one, if the left right error is good, but the top bottom error is greater than 0 0.12 volts, it'll go to state three to readjust the X axis. Second one, if the left right error and top bottom error are good, it'll go to state one and do nothing. And the third one, it'll be the same, the if condition that'll allow to go back to state zero to zero the axis. In the event it goes to state three, another set of three if statements will occur. First one, if the top bottom error is good, but the left right error is greater than 0 0.12 volts, it'll go to state two to readjust the z-axis. Second one, if the left right error and top bottom error are good, it'll go back to state one to do nothing. And the third one, same, it'll go to state zero and uh, zero the axes. And we have a illustration here to help get across the, um, the idea of, so the top view of the photocell array. So we're gonna take the average of one, two, two, four, three, four, and one, three. So we'll have the top, right, bottom, and left. And basically we'll evaluate the left, right error based on the difference between the left side, the right side, and then top, bottom, the difference between the top and the bottom one. Okay, I'll uh, hand it off to Gage. And the components is basically a Z servo, an X servo, a gimbal mounting the two together, and a photoresistor array. Um, those are going to be controlled by an Arduino Mega. Two and the Arduino Mega and servos are going to be powered by um, butt connectors attached to a 12 volt power supply. This is going to be what it's going to look like once it's fully completed in the fall. It's going to have a base, and on the top of that base is a flange and a half inch pipe uh, where the pipe is screwed into the flange, and this flange is mounted to the base. Then on the top, there's going to be a custom servo mount for the Z servo to screw into the top of the pipe. And then on the top of the servo, you can see the flange that attacks the X servo and the mounting bracket for the X servo to the solar panel and photoresistor array. Right? This gives it uh, two degrees of movement through the X and Z axis. Inside the base is going to be the power supply, but converters, Arduino Mega wiring, and uh, supply exhaust fans for cooling. Um, uh, originally, we planned the base to be 3D printed, but due to the um, heat instability of PLA and the likelihood of us presenting in the fall where it's going to be hot. I think that we should get uh, a pre-made drawer made out of wood that would be structurally sound enough to mount this on if we're going to have it outside to present in its actual environment. Then we go on to the butt converter and the servo. This is a 25 kilogram centimeter servo, uh, 12 volt power supply, and then Arduino Mega. And then now we have the project improvements, which will be added possibly in the fall. This includes a 4.5 watt LED lamp, which is sized accordingly to the five watt solar panel and a power analyzer, which will give the voltage current and power that is being given by the solar panel to the, um, the lamp. And this case, the lamp actually gives us a physical way to analyze the power while the, um, the uh, analyzer allows us to give a exact measurement. And the overall takeaway, I feel that we all worked really well together. We learned how to cooperate. We had to sit down and really manage our time because we all had uh, filled schedules with work and our studies. So we only could re meet rarely uh, while at school and now when we're at home it's even more strict so we had to settle down and get everything and check and we all learned how to manage our time very well which is going to be great for use in the industry once we graduate.